Today we're going to be working on a 15 horsepower Mercury two-stroke outboard. It's an older one. A uh, gentleman called me up. It's uh, 2005 15 horsepower. And uh, he said it started, ran, popped, and then stalled, and then wouldn't restart. Um, then he kind of went crazy. Um, he threw a bucket of parts at it. Literally. So... Yep, he brought me a bucket of parts. So we got, let's see, filters, spark plugs, uh, stators, two different stators. The one on the engine, uh, carburetor parts, triggers, oh, just everything. So I guess that uh, he kind of like took everything apart and he's trying to figure out what's wrong with it and it still won't start. So the first thing we want to do is to verify that this engine is worth working on by doing a compression test. So let's look at that first. Okay, we're going to thread the uh, spark gap tester into spark plug number one. Put my compression adapter in here. And I'm going to make sure that my emergency stop flange is shut off. And I'm going to hold the throttle wide open with my thumb. Not something you have to do, but recommend it. So, lanyards are off, hold it wide open, pull it over. Five times, probably pretty good. So, 100, 105, somewhere in there looks real good. Let's do the second cylinder. And again, 105, somewhere around there. Looks real good. So I would say definitely this engine should run. Hey, it's Ted here. I'm about to start this second video on this 15 horsepower, no start complaint. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, hit that like button. Anyway, um, I'm just doing a little bit of visual here before I start doing some testing. And this is the kind of thing I've run into a lot of times when an owner decides he wants to try to do some of his own work or somebody that he knows has worked on it. You know, I don't like to point fingers at anybody. Um, once we get to the point where we see a whole bunch of stuff has been changed and the engine doesn't run, we got to go through the whole setup, especially on a two stroke. Because if we don't do it right and it's, you know, over advanced timing, uh, lean fuel, whatever, you know, the engine's going to fail. I, I just noticed a couple things and I wanted to go through that with you just to see the visual what I'm looking at. So let's get started here. You know, when we're looking at things, I'm looking at this idle mixture screw and it's backed out, I think, a little excessively. So this screw here, you know, should have a gap in it. So that tells me that that's been messed with. Here's some of the more troublesome things that I see. So I haven't touched anything yet, but here is the throttle and it comes up to wide open throttle and it hits the stop screw here. And that stop screw has a lock on it, that lock nut. Well, it's loose, finger tight. So somebody has loosened this up. This should be glued at the factory with Loctite so nobody can mess with it. And I've stressed this many times is make sure the serial number matches what you're working on. If it's the uh, replacement power head and it's a different one, then it'll have a different number on it. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here is the serial number. So this is a 2005 um, 9.9. .9. Serial number is 01B140295. No big deal. Here's the serial number on the actual power head. And this gentleman told me this has been replaced with a new power head. And that new power head is OG5221 A2. So it's a much newer version, a B version versus a G version power head. So, you know, it may be a complete replica of this. Um, a quick serial number search, Mercury Marine Online will tell you that. Okay, so I got to look in the service manual and I got to figure out what this is, um, what the serial number is, and to make sure that parts are the same 
um, stator numbers, trigger numbers, things like that. So that's the other thing I got to do. Okay, the next thing I want to do when I start here is um, it's got good compression. Let's find out if it's got good spark. So I've got my Steven spark tester here. I've got the plugs out, make it easy to pull it over. I'm going to hook this up to the two spark plug leads. Connect this to the block ground connection. And I want to be able to see it. I can while I'm pulling it over. Let's see if we got any spark. Now I want to put the lanyard back in the run position. We're going to see no spark. All right. So the next option that we can do to see if we've got spark is we want to remove the stop mechanism, which is the stop button and the emergency lanyard. So there's a connection on here, which is a, in mercury, is a black with a yellow tracer wire, and that grounds out the stator through the switch box. So when I unplug that, that means that the switch box should receive voltage, it should create spark, and we should see it here in a spark gap tester. So let's try that. Okay, did that, still no spark. So now the bucket of parts comes into play. Uh, he's changed the trigger, he's changed the stator, he's changed the uh, switch box. So we gotta find out if this ignition module um, I think he said he has the original in the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the and test the stator windings, the trigger windings for resistance. Um, the other thing I noticed was there is this chafe guard here that needs to go back on the trigger winding so they don't hit the flywheel. That's really important. I'll put that back on later, um, but I'll get set up to do a, a resistance test on those components. In the next video, then I'll go through the diagnosis process and then uh, tell you what I find and show you how to fix it. So look for the next video, hit that subscribe and like button. I'll talk to you then.